came back from Bulgaria um, blown away by our biggest story that we'd ever done, feeling like we were 60 minutes or something. And we gave all the footage to our editor, Jake, and uh, Jake was confused and saddened and freaked out by it. So what we're gonna do is go through the whole editing process with Jake. Did you go to Varna or Bafa first? I don't know what Bafa is. I think Bafa is Varna. That's Cyrillic, that's phonetic, and that's English. So we should start there. We did an article in the magazine about a French journalist who went to Bulgaria and bought a warhead on the black market. We were so fascinated by this that we decided to fly to Sofia and research it ourselves. And when we were there, we met this guy who had written the first article about it from Standard. He's an American dude, but um, he's been living there for 10 years. Every big arms scandal that happened in the world had a Bulgarian connection. Sure. They'd find some box which said these bullets were made in Bulgaria. He's the guy who helped us find uh, this Ivanov. It's not his right name. It's like Ivanov is like Smith. You know, it's like, yeah. you don't want anyone to know, like me, Smith, Ivanov. I first heard about Mr. Ivanov in 2001, a couple months after September 11. He is a former military intelligence colonel. He went into private business finding construction workers for the building industry in Saudi Arabia. The Bin Laden family is one of the most powerful in Saudi Arabia, and if you're gonna do construction work in Saudi Arabia, you're gonna work with them one way or the other. We're interviewing th this dude who's, who sold a, a, a warhead on the black market. We're here in, uh, in Sleven, which is in, in eastern Bulgaria. It used to be a Russian military base where they have some arms dumps. The Sleven is important because it's the place where the French journalists bought the warhead. It's where everything went down. So we went there and are researching and checking things out. And we get word that Ivanov is actually in Sunny Beach. We just got to Sunny Beach. We've been driving for six hours. We're on the Black Sea. Apparently Ivanov is here doing a construction project for retirees. To him, there's no difference between making Beverly Hills condos on the Black Sea and selling warheads because it's all just capitalism. It's so just buying just and selling. Out in the open doing like normal business now. Yeah, so definitely. Things. Why would he even talk to you when he's got his own, own stuff going now? He's kind of. Well, because we gave him money. <laughs> Again, everything's very simple there. It's capitalism. It's just like, you want anything? Pay for it. The mentality is selling women, selling drugs, selling guns, selling condos, selling cars, selling houses. It doesn't matter. And the, uh, the attitude, too, is this is your system. It's your capitalism. How can you look down your noses at us for selling warheads? That's what you do. Warheads are worth money, therefore we sell them. So what's better, capitalism or communism? It's difficult to say. <laughs> For one is better before, for other is better now. Now is more freedom, freedom to choice. I prefer now, I prefer now. Our idea is to make here something like Beverly Hills. This is my main job at the moment. And would you say this is the largest investment of foreign capital in Bulgaria right yes. now? Yes, yes. About 80 million. 80 yeah. million. What's the property tax situation in Bulgaria? Once you buy, you have to pay tax? Uh, taxes are funny. Yeah. If I tell you, you will not believe. Okay. Okay. About ten dollars per year. As we're talking to him about his construction project, which actually has a lot of Kuwaiti and Saudi Arabian investment, the topic of the Bin Laden construction company came up, and he said, "Look, if we're going to talk about this anymore, we have to go back to your hotel where we can film in private, and I want my face blurred and my voice distorted." And we said, "Okay, let's go." My friends, uh, Pakistanis, start to tell me, come into Pakistan to see us, to see our office. They are very friendly. And one day they made a meeting, and um, they told me that uh, Bin Laden will speak there. After one or two days, I have a live meeting with this person, maximum for two, three minutes. Not the daddy Bin Laden, Osama Bin Laden? Osama, three minutes. And what did he want? He only shake the hands, say, Salaam Alaikum, Alaikum Salaam. 
and uh, nothing more. But mm -hmm. on the next day, I have meeting with uh, his uh, assistants, mm -hmm. and uh, they ask me for a nuclear power station. So what they asked him for was to set up a waste management company that would get the contract to deal with the radioactive waste from Kozlodui, which is the big Bulgarian nuclear power station. They ask him to get this waste management company. He's like, why? And they're like, well, we want to get waste. <laughs> That's me being an Arab. And then he said, but why? Why don't you get the real thing? And they're like, real thing? And that's how the French guy found out the real thing, meaning the warhead. This uh, French journalist, they want to show that uh, in Bulgaria everything uh, they can buy and everything they can. So they told me, please find. Mm. And I promise, it's easy for me to promise. This show I show to them, and they bring one military specialist. He gave me 100 questions, but I gave total answers. So they brought in Fedor Pachenko, who was the ex-vice director of the Soviet atomic program, to verify that it was real. And finally, he told that this is credible. When you actually see the footage of the, of the detonator, you're like, they don't need to get shitty radioactive waste. They can buy a, like a plutonium detonator on the black market. So that's when, that's when you're like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. So why, is it called a dirty bomb because it's made with waste? Yes. Okay. So let's say you, you set off a dirty bomb made out, made out of cesium or something, some radioactive material in New York. It wouldn't kill that many people. Maybe it would kill like a couple thousand people. But it would irradiate all of Manhattan. So everyone would have to leave New York because the chances of getting cancer would increase like 100% day by day. Obviously, nobody wants to get cancer, so they leave. You can't come back for another 30 or 40 years, and you can't clean it up. So you know, New York ceases to exist. It's done, which would kill America, right? So where's the bomb? The device uh, remained one year in the house of my, uh, my mother here, <laughs> and he put uh, when vegetables uh, in one garden. garden. Well, we said, where's the bomb? And he said, oh, I, I buried it in my mother's garden in Varna. And we're like, well, hey, we'll give you money. Let's go. Let's go get, you know, we'll go see the bomb. He's like, no, no, we can't. Well, we, we tried to find out, but, the, you know, the bomb's still out there, which is kind of terrifying. Or there's other bombs. I mean, this was part of the old Soviet arms dump from Slevin. There might be 10 other bombs. God knows who the hell bought them. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So if you can go buy one of these things on the black market, that's it. Which you guys just went and found. <laughs> yeah, we found the dude who sold it. Then that's it. That's the end of time, man. Because, uh, you know, it could be Osama bin Laden. It could be some white supremacist dude from Arkansas. It could be some guy who hates your football team, whatever it is. I know, why, why don't we know this? Why, why, isn't, why aren't we being told this?